on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. All right. Well, today's episode is a takeover. And honestly, I can't believe it took us 10 seasons. Yes, folks. 10 seasons to get to this takeover. Rogue Ales and Spirits from Newport, Oregon has been a mainstay in the American craft beer scene since they first opened their doors in 1988. We're going to have the classic Dead Guy Ale. Mm. Colossal Claude. Hazelnut Brown Nectar 2021. Double Chocolate Stout. Classic. Probably going to go great with that cake. Combat Wombat and Jam Sesh. We'll be right back after this break. live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Hey everyone, welcome aboard to another sud segment where we say, if you want a six pack, go to the gym. We only deal with cases and kegs here. Ha ha. Yeah, that's fair. Hey, look, man, I was drunk when I wrote it. Get over it. (laughs) Move along. (laughs) Fine. I am one of your hosts, good old guy Juliana, and joining me at the table today is good old boy Kendall. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. Hi. Especially with this wonderful chocolate cake in front of me. <laughs> Thank you. One of the ways to Kendall's heart is not only beer, but chocolate cake, I guess. Good old boy Sparky. Thank you for the pepperoni. Wow, that could be taken out of context <laughs> <laughs> in retrospect. You're welcome That's for my love that. language. Was he, uh, was he looking at you or Kendall when he said that? I think he was looking at Never mind. Uh, yeah, uh. <laughs> that was some fine pepperoni. Legit. Yeah. Yeah. Good boy, Dave. Cocaine and hookers, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I thought we were talking about stuff we like. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What was I thinking? All right. Well, today's episode is a takeover. And honestly, I can't believe it took us 10 seasons. Yes, folks. 10 seasons to get to this takeover. Rogue Ales and Spirits from Newport, Oregon has been a mainstay in the American craft beer scene since they first opened their doors in 1988. Dang. That, that was, was a special year for me. That really, it was a great year for craft beer too. Why was it special? I graduated high school. <laughs> wow! So, uh, for people that don't know, class uh, eighty eight was a huge year for craft beer. Uh, Rogue started, so did Deschutes, Goose Island, uh, Great Lakes, uh, Wincoop, Brooklyn. I mean, the list goes yeah. on and on. Some wow. of the most legendary breweries all started that same year. Man, that's pretty cool. Yes. And it's cool that he knows that. And we're old. He's but an that's encyclopedia. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we're old, yes. No, we're just vintage. Well, in 2013, a lot of them did collaborations for their 25th birthday. So oh, next, that's right. Yeah. Next year will be their 35th birthday. So maybe we'll see Ooh, some other good stuff coming out. That would be cool. So cool, man. Yeah, that would be cool. All right. And let me tell you, they do it all mm-hmm. with Rogue. I mean, they really do. They grow they brew and they distill. Um, they cooper their own barrels and they even can their own cocktails. Well, not sure if the last one's worth bragging rights, but well, you know, <laughs> I'm sure they're pretty good. <laughs> and they also apparently do a CBD seltzer as well. Hey. So I know, right? 
Good old boy Sparky, why don't you tell us the lineup for today? Well, our lineup today, we will be having, for Kendall's birthday, of course. (laughs) Thank you. We're going to have the classic Dead Guy Ale. Mm. Colossal Claude. Hazelnut Brown Nectar 2021. Double Chocolate Stout. Classic. Probably going to go great with that cake. Combat Wombat and Jam Sesh. All right. Very good. Cool. Uh, Go to Boy Kendall. Why don't you give us the Suds ratings for today? We'll be discussing and rating these beers with these Suds ratings, plus our signature belching sounds. Here are those ratings now. One, that sucks. Give me anything but a bud. Two, was that a belch? Three. Ah, what a relief. Four. A body should really not make that sound. And five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another. Nice. bringing the energy today. <laughs> Must Fired be from the cake. It's like yeah. cake yeah. at them all. Cake like doesn't that. hurt. <laughs> Okay, before we get into the beer, let's talk about Rogue for a minute. Yeah. First memories of Rogue. Probably, well, um, just seeing their bombers in liquor stores, you know, in the late, what, 2000s. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, they they really kind of own the bomber uh, scene. And I remember the first time I saw one of their, like, voodoo donut things, I was like, oh, "Oh, yes, with that. Pepto bismol yeah, pink. What well, and I, and I'll be honest, like it turned me off. I was like, man, I've had rogue, but I'm not sure I want something in a Pepto bismol. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all do you? It sends the wrong message. Yeah, it does. Oh, but it was good though. And and I know that like bombers are a dead format, mm-hmm. but that was always like my Saturday afternoon. Well, I'm gonna get wasted. Here's a bomber of whatever percent this is. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The good old days. I don't really know if it was an early memory, but I remember when I when I lived in East Nashville, I would go to Red Door and they had Dead Guy on Tap. Wow. And that was like my go-to, man. I would just hit that the whole time I was there. There are a lot of places had Dead Guy on Tap. Yeah. And it was it was a special time. Yeah. That's crazy to even think about nowadays, isn't it? Like There's you- a little place in Donaldson that puts uh, Dead Guy on Tap every few months. Yeah. Nice. And I remember like some of my mm-hmm. friends, like their first homebrew things were dead guy clones. Like I remember there was a yeah. guy in Knoxville. I used to, that was like, I've made the perfect dead guy clone. Well, that, legendary at, at some point they, because of the Pac-Man yeast and like that, they, they, I don't remember if it was Y yeast or white labs, who, whoever they partnered with and they would release strains. You could buy Pac-Man yeast. And then the thing about it was it just, it chewed everything up and like it attenuated out incredibly well so that's that's like one of their signature yeasts that they use and dig out in a lot of different beers yeah yeah Pac-Man. I, 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 <laughs> I remember the just the variety and mm-hmm. at the time i was I, mo- I had just moved down here so this was like early 2000s and um didn't know of rogue when i lived in buffalo but knew them New, like as soon as I came down here it was them and Stone and like Stone was great but it was like so in your face you know like yeah. I had to no offense but I had to be like in a certain mood like mm-hmm. after a hockey game in which we lost I would have Stone but after a hockey game in which we won it was Rogue all the way <laughs> I know that sounds stupid but and I love the variety that Rogue had and they were and just and the bombers it was all about <laughs> the bombers everything I got was in a bomber it, I, I mean yeah and it was it was so impressive I think the variety is a key thing which is now every brewery is yeah. doing a huge variety but back then Rogue was really one of the leaders in doing some really interesting crazy beers I mean mm-hmm. and they weren't afraid to try stuff no yeah, and, and no I've, and I've heard people talk about you know what was the origin of the pastry stout and I'm thinking Rogue was kind of doing some sweet stouts way back when before sure. we were even talking about that term yeah yeah 
Yeah, I mean, and they were a little subtle on it as opposed to the in-your-face craziness, you know, of, of now. Right, but... Mm. but they, they really led the way. Yeah, they set things in motion. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, let's start off with the most well-known, I I would think, of all of the rogues. Definitely that one would, of them. Yeah. yeah, and that would be Dead Guy. So for those of you that don't know and have been living under a rock for the last few years, this is 6.8% ABV. It is a Maybach style ale in the style of German Maybach using their proprietary Pac-Man yeast. Dead Guy is deep honey in color with a multi aroma and rich hearty flavor. And honestly, like just two row C15 Munich malts, you know, and pearl and sterling hops. And there you go. Such a great beer. I mean, so easy to drink, a lot of flavor, but not overpowering. It's just outstanding. It's like I can't I can't believe like I'm gonna hit myself in the face for going so many years since the last time I had it. Shame on you, sir. I know shame right? on you. I suck. I yeah, am I, terrible. I've actually had maybe two or three dead guys in the last year. Um, really? Which has been a very special thing because I, I don't know if they're trying to push it again. Yeah. But I've definitely seen people. Maybe maybe everybody's just tired of hazy you know, IPAs and lactose bombs. And so they just want beer. And there's nothing more classic than a rogue dead guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, oh, it's Malty, awesome. It, just yeah. Sweet. It's the right amount of malt. It's the right amount of sweet. It's not offensive at all. It's easygoing. Can go with anything. Like a chocolate cake. Like a chocolate cake. <laughs> Great yeah. suggestion. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Jeez, we should try that. What yeah. do you think, Sparky? Man, I mean, this just it just takes me back. Like I remember the first time I ever had one, and I I don't think I'd ever had like a Maybach before. And so, you know, I didn't know how to process it. And uh, you know, it's amazing coming back and revisiting, because I'll be the first to tell you it's been probably since pre pandemic since I've had this beer. Yeah. I forgot how boozy it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's balanced, but whoops, there's a surprise. There. No, it, it definitely brings, uh, brings a little load with it. Yeah. And the, the good use of hops too. There's a yes. solid bitterness to round out the sweetness of yeah. it too. And it's, exactly. it's just a super well-balanced, well-made beer. I'm a fan. Yeah. And yeah. using pearl and sterling, I think is just moi. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just really good. Well, I kind of forgot this, but Kendall, can you quickly give us the ratings did before we... That no, we did it. We did? Yeah. Oh, okay. You, I think he did a great job. I he was just yeah. like, he hammered it, man. Did he? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Have you, how many beers have you had? Hey, apparently, I guess <laughs> I've had a couple. How much chocolate cake have you had? I did shotgun a dead guy <laughs> oh, before this. All right. Well, what are we going to rate this? Yeah. As if there was a doubt. Yeah. It's we are going to rate this a five. Because we don't have a six. I just love the, the caramelly kind yeah. of stuff going on there. Just that sweetness that's so nice. So yummy. So yeah. bounce out. And yeah. God, there's booze. So there. if you're listening to this and you haven't had a dead guy in a while or you've never had a dead guy at all, go, go to the go store. Get, get one. It is because it's still the same as it ever you're was. You're going to love it. Yeah. Yeah. Great beer. Consistent. Uh, we'll be back with some more Rogue in just a minute. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're taking a little history tour of breweries and their longevity and the fact that it took us 10 years to do a brewery takeover of Rogue. Man, that's depressing. Anyways, we're making up for it. We're making up for it. So today's takeover is of Rogue. Rogue. Yes. And right before the break, we had talked about Dead Guy, which was probably the most popular one in you know back in the day and what would we pair dead guy with food wise i'd want a barbecue pork shoulder Ooh. Mm. oh wow yeah nice. so in a um a hamburger that you just pulled off the grill yourself you know that's got a little bit of char on it mm. okay gotcha mm. yeah. yeah yeah definitely something kind of meaty and juicy and mm -hmm. Yeah, a little fat. Yeah, it'll, it'll go well with most beef. Yeah. 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 Cool. Okay. I'm, I'm down getting, with that. I'm getting hungry. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We just wanted you guys to talk about food for a second. Yeah, we so, did it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So 
dead guy was one of the old originals, if you will. But now let's move on to something a newer offering from Rogue, and that would be Colossal Claude, their Imperial IPA. So this one is 8.2% ABV. Um, it's been a few decades since a Colossal Claude sighting has been reported, but we're fairly certain that massive sea monster has been laying low off the coast of his favorite brewery. Word has it that after years of terrifying sailors and feasting on salmon, he acquired a taste for hops. And you know what? Good for him. It's about friggin' time. So they brewed this Imperial IPA with a colossal dose of Cascade, Chinook, Citra, and Strata hops in the hope of coaxing Claude out to join them for a pint. So this is, I don't know if this is appropriate for the show. <laughs> <laughs> but because we're talking about sea monsters, I did read a story or an article recently uh, that they, um, I, I guess the guy is a marine biologist or something who theorized that the uh, Loch Ness Monster uh, was probably a uh, a whale member. Oh, yeah, I've heard you about that? that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Apparently no, I didn't see that. I mean, Apparently they're pretty big. Yeah, they are. So I wonder if Colossal Claude is, uh, you know, just a big whale unit. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, wow. I've yeah. I've been to Newport a few times and I never saw Colossal Claude, so I can't yeah. confirm. Okay. Boy, you know, like just smelling this, by the way, all, mm. I just like mm. all like the first thing that thought to me is like, God, a good old West Coast IPA. Yeah. Smells like That's a rogue like, IPA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is just like it. textbook. A little hazy. Although, too, yeah, a little bit. hazy. A little bit. Or than uh, the traditional clear ones they used to make mm -hmm. but it's still it's got that flavor you know you can't if you've had a lot of old rogue ipas in the past you know it's rogue yeah yeah a Absolutely. nice multi body and then just the uh, hops for days but hops yeah but days. just slightly refined you mm -hmm. know what i mean it's not the it's not the forgive me for saying pungent west coast right that it used to be this is you know this is west coast 2.0 if you will <laughs> But I the evolution. Yeah. Well, that, the really softer like mouthfeel, I think, really kind of makes the hops, takes the edge off. Yeah. 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 That's Good call. Fair. Good call. Would you say the ABV on this is? Um, This is 8.2. .2. It'll get you drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no friggin' doubt. You set them up for that one. Yeah. Yeah. So just. It's a great beer. Now, what would you pair with this? Hmm. Thai food. Ooh. Oh, wow. cut some of the heat. Plus, I like a spice and hoppy can really accentuate yeah. on another well. I love or poorly. It just it's it's a crapshoot, but mm -hmm. when it works, it works. I love Nashville hot chicken with a good like powerful like double IPA. I mean, I regret all those choices about two <laughs> right? hours after that. The man in the moment. Mm. Mm, yeah. He loves it going in, not so great coming out. Yeah. Well, you know, what you there's a price to pay Sparky's for every decision. He's on the hot seat. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to rate the Colossal Claude a solid four. Uh, uh, not just a regular four. Like, right. Okay. Moving on. Let's talk about another one that's classic. I mean, I remember this from years ago. Oh, they I can still picture the bottle. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's so crazy. Well, um, that brings you back, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I used to have it at um, um, the place that just went out. Flying Saucer? Yes, thank you. Oh, pour yeah. one out. Yeah, yeah. Out of a bomber. Yeah. <laughs> Not on the carpet. No, because I remember when I would order it, um, Oddly enough, like these these guys would just sort of show up and be like, "Well, oh, you're not going to drink that all by yourself, are you?" I'm like, "Uh, well, just a little girl by yourself, <laughs> you're going to drink that whole big exactly. beer." Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, there was there was quite a few guys that wanted to try it too. The, I mean, that they like this one. Okay, uh, the hazelnut brown nectar 21, 2021 version, uh, five point six percent ABV from the hazelnut capital of the United States. This nutty twist on a European brown ale was originally crafted by rogue brewmaster John Meyer's good friend and avid home brewer, Chris Studa. Hope I'm saying your name right. This 
Nectar Brown uh, offers a hazelnut aroma, rich nutty flavor, and smooth malty finish. Again with the pearl and sterling hops. Interesting. I personally think it smells better than it tastes. Yeah, I agree me. with you. Yeah, I mean, same. I can appreciate this beer, but it was never one of my favorites. I was, yeah. I just wasn't into nutty brown ales. Well, I mean, this yeah. is a good drinking beer. It's it's way lighter. Don't let the color scare you if you like if you don't like big heavy beers. This is not. No, no, this is a no. No, beer. its bark is bigger than its bite. It's yeah. also not. It's it's pretty dry too. I mean, yeah. And I think so. I might be in the minority, but I I always really liked this one because the aroma on it was so like thick and luscious, but. It didn't taste you know, that way. Exactly. Yeah, so man. I could drink a bomber of this and be okay, you know? But it was just something a little bit more, it had a little bit more zhuzh than a regular brown ale. Man, this girl and her zhuzh. I know. Right? Lots of zhuzh today. There's, yeah. there's zhuzh. Yes. Zhuzh. Also, my synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> she likes all zhuzh. Okay, what would you pair with this? Hazelnuts, <laughs> New- <laughs> Nutella, yeah. Jinx. Yeah. It's going well with the chocolate cake. I tell you that. Yeah, yeah that, that's. It would, would definitely complement that. Yeah, it would complement a lot of desserts. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I, I wouldn't take it out of the dessert sphere. Yeah, something more savory. I'm. I'm not. I have to think about that. Hmm. Maybe some, just like regular. Like baked chicken or something like something that's not super like herb chicken or something where it's not super flavorful, but this could kind of carry it a little bit. I don't know. Maybe your grandma's tuna casserole. Oh, this could hide it. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's great, Grandma. I swear. (laughs) Yeah, I, I was kind of going there too. I was thinking maybe some like rotisserie chicken with some uh, roasted potatoes and maybe a Let little uh, with some kind of a green vegetable. Yeah. yeah, just a basic dinner. This would this would be an okay beer for, with it. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. I was thinking of beef roast, but that's just. Beef. I think that would work too. Like that's because I started talking about beef on whack about an hour ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Sorry about that. Sure. <sighs> Well, still, pretty tasty beer. Yes, yes smells yes. great. Okay, what are we going to rate this one? Uh, okay, mm-hmm. most people are going to rate this a three. <laughs> what was the difference between the twenty twenty one edition? Have they like reformulated it? What's up with that? They put it in a can for sure. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, we have known Rogue to be, you know. <laughs> the glass bombery things of years past, but every beer that we are going to talk about today is in a can. That's just when they started canning, that probably put the bomber industry out of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? like wrecked it. Yeah, yeah. there's, there's a lot of wrote, unused bombers. No. Yeah, that's a bad time. Oh, yeah. actually, on the can it says you can pair it with grilled cheese or pork chops. Grilled cheese. Hmm. Grilled cheese. Okay. Interesting. Oh, sure. Okay. Why I not? Do, I, do I want to know what kind of cheese. just like American cheese or oh, I'm sure it's probably cheese from their rogue creamery. What oh. do you guys? Uh, what do you guys usually use when you make your own grilled cheese? I mean, I I usually use like cheddar, but mm. my kids like because we went like five or six years without having American cheese, they're obsessed with it because my mom yeah. gave it to them, and I'm like, all right, eat like your cheese kind of in a plastic wrap. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, no, I know. I, I use American cheese, but I only use boar's head. Yeah, yeah see, there you go. that's and that's very different from the classic it's real sixty-four cheese. Yeah. slices of American cheese. <laughs> but I, yeah, it's like I six like, bucks a half pound. Yeah, I like a blend. Like I, I like cheddar, but then I would do cheddar American, and then maybe something <gasps> a little bit light. So between it. You know. So I've been getting in brick cheese from Wisconsin because I've been making a lot of Detroit style pizza and I've yeah. been getting in these like huge blocks, five pound blocks of it. And I made a grilled cheese with that, with my, with Abby's Hala, and oh my God. I bet it was legit. That, it didn't suck. Yeah. yeah. So wait, one last question about yeah. that. Are you guys mayonnaise is the yeah. frying lubricant mm-hmm. or butter? I, butter. I, butter? I, I go mayonnaise. Now. I'm a mayo guy. Yeah. I'm butter. 
butter. It's right. so it. I usually make your grilled cheeses for you, lady. Just so I know, you know but and I, use I know the difference, but I let it go. Yeah. I'm a uh, I'm butter and I'm cheddar and Munster. Oh man, yeah, good choice that, on Munster. Yeah, that's cheese. a good way to go too. That's just me. Throw some Provel in there. You got it. Oh, Provel. I don't even know you people. <laughs> There's not, nothing wrong with Provel. Yes, the entire divisive. city of St. Louis is wrong with Provel. <laughs> This is probably one of the most divisive things in the it, history of this show. It is. Either, I will fight you on you're either pro 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 bell or it's <laughs> All right, fine. Let's let's go deep and decadent, and let's go into the double chocolate doubt. I just want to keep smelling this. Nine percent ABV. They doubled down on their chocolate oh. stout recipe to create an imperial version of the classic. It's just too good to deny. So share it with a special friend or treat yourself and enjoy this luxuriously creamy stout featuring intense notes of chocolate and dark roasted malts. (laughs) (laughs) This is like... I I was was worried that this was going to be overly sweet and I was delightfully... (sighs) Pleased to find that that was not the case. There is a nice balanced. roasty sharpness. Oh, yes, there gosh, is. There is. Yeah, mm. I'm really digging this. I, is this so? I'm guessing this is new because I don't remember this. But the the classic chocolate stout was just one of the best that they had. Yeah, and they did it better, I think, than anybody back in the day. You know, adding chocolate into beer. I was thinking. I don't. I don't remember. I was just thinking. I don't remember having the regular chocolate stout. I just. I seem in my mind. I always remember the double chocolate stout, and didn't it come in like a red uh, bomber? Because like it's the red can now. Am I just totally making that up? I yeah. I'm colorblind, so oh. I can't help you. There. Wasn't it like in a brown bomber? <laughs> <laughs> I had a bad time with a lot of brown bombers, but <laughs> I yeah, I some of that know. hot chicken. I, yeah, it's I don't a brown bomber. I don't remember that. I I remember it being on nitro a couple of times. Interesting. Um, and thought that was like that blew my mind. Probably that's interesting. Drinking a lot of nine yeah, percent beer there was, has um, made all of our memories a little fuzzy. Again at the mm-hmm. saucer because of course. Well, I, yeah, I mean, when I first moved down here, it was it was all about the saucer because I'd go there either before or after a hockey game. And the saucer was all about Rogue back in the day. Yeah. yeah. I mean, because it was what one else of the, were they going to be about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's kind of true too. They yeah. pushed a lot of Rogue beer through that place. It's always so funny too because there's always you know nitrogenated beers used to be like a thing you know like that used to be the way to take the Guinness tap handle away and now like oh, yeah, yeah that was kind of the whole play with that and now you just don't see people do that as much but I love the creamy mouth feel and just the whole I would love to try a, a nitro version of this it's got a kick I mean mm-hmm. I'm getting a little bit of the alcohol on this one oh it's, sure uh, oh, yeah. sure a little boozy. Yeah, just a tad, but it's there. Mm-hmm. How does it pair with the cake? Very well. It's almost overwhelms. It's almost too too much chocolate, though. This would be better with something like a, a raspberry tart or something like mm. that. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, more cherry. You need, you need more contrast because chocolate nice, and chocolate's just intense. Yeah, just a nice it's almost too bowl much. Bowl of really good yeah. vanilla ice cream or something. Yep. You know? But this on its own is just it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's really so balanced the in a really good way. The factor is low. Yeah. Yeah. Minimal suck. No, super balanced, super beautiful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it just, you know, I feel like, I feel like <laughs> maybe I've been ruined from years of some of these pastry stouts, but like this is just like really nice and balanced and, you know, it's not like gonzo up to 11 on everything. Well, it's like, uh, you know, it's like this or like um, Old Rasputin. Oh, wow. Or like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of some others, but like just a really good. The narwhal. Sh- yeah. Narwhal, just a yeah. really good straight stout. That's just, yeah. just mm. let it be, you know. Right. You don't have to, if it's done really well, yeah. you don't have to add to it. The uh, Like the Samuel Smith's organic chocolate stout. <sighs> just had some probably last the, week. Probably the best chocolate mm-hmm. stout ever made. But this is like right up there too. Because I mean, they're, like you said, it's not overly sweet. You know, it's got that that bitter component of chocolate 
that you, that you really find in the darker chocolate that's really it, nice. It almost finishes more with a coffee finish. It even. does. It really does. It reminds me of the coffee I had for breakfast this morning. Um, and man, that Sam Smith's episode was so fun. That was such a great episode. Yeah. That it was re- some of the best beer. It's like it, coming home. Yeah, yeah, it really, it really was. But this is a testament. I, I feel what we've had so far, nothing has been like really crazy flavor explosions, but they're all solid, you mm-hmm. know, and you don't need to have all those adjuncts in. No. If it's, if it's well made, it's meant to be. And this certainly is. I mean, a couple of these beers are basically what they've been for, I, I mean, what? Decade or two. Billions right? of yeah, years. I mean, yes. Dang. It's yes. the dawn of time. Yes. But I mean, but hey, once you make a classic and you got it dialed in, you don't have to do yeah, anything. I mean, else, it's like, you know? you know, Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. I know, and I, and I know I keep mentioning other breweries' beers, but to put it in context, like, those, when you're talking those, about really yeah. great, well made beers that don't have to be pastry or, you know, brute or cold IPAs or whatever the new, <laughs> newest crap is now. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So what are we going to rate the double chocolate stout? Yeah. Oh, man, whatever you guys want. Okay. Um, I'm going to go seven. five. All right. All right. Yeah. I'm going to say five. That's, five. That's fair. It was great to have that, the, the hazelnut and the dead guy all together. Those are some of their classic or old school beers. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Things are about to and change. It's, it's nice, yeah, because we definitely have some of the newer ones. We've had one already, and then we've got these coming up. So they're grounded in their history, but they're still experimenting and doing cool new stuff. Yeah, still a degree of innovation going on, but it's a refrained innovation, I want to say. You know what I mean? It's not going all crazy. Like some kind of breweries have sort of. Yeah, exactly. I mean, some have gone off the rails. You know, and and Rogue has been solid and consistent, and yeah. Up next, CBD seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, maybe a little trendy, but you know what I mean. But not bad. If you do it right, it doesn't. It's all good. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Very Get you all jacked up. Okay. Um. Wow, I almost need a minute to to yeah, process to all of down. this chocolate. <laughs> yeah, no, it's come so down from so your good. Sugar high. All right, well, we'll come down and talk about more rogue in just a minute. Freaking out, man! Welcome back, everyone. So today we're doing a brewery takeover, long time in the making of Rogue Brewery, ales you, and spirits. Yes, can spirits. you believe that? Um, we've been talking about. Some interesting styles, um, classic styles. And before we get on to our next beer, Kendall, um, I believe you have a story about being there, right? I do. I've actually been to Newport, Oregon twice. Um, one time, June and I were anniversary trip, and we stayed at the Rogue Beer and Bed, or Ooh. Bed and Beer, which is they've got a, it's, it's kind of like an Airbnb, just above their bar so they've got this cool old pub that they've had there for probably t- well, over what almost 30 some years wow it's right down in the old part of newport by the bay where all the fishermen are coming in there's some oh. great seafood restaurants down there and we went we went to the brewery we had lunch at the main production facility in the tap room there and then later in the day we went over to check in to our room they've got i think two or three apartments it's a really small operation um but we went down to the bar and we were going to get a beer and then go down to Moe's down the street and get some clam chowder. But we never left. We were there till like 11 <laughs> o'clock at night. <laughs> we met a bunch of locals. They're the, just the kindest, nicest people. They were all just That's cool. crazy rogue fans. And we got to sample every beer they had, eat food, and then go upstairs to the apartment. I was, was going to say, did you make it home? <laughs> yeah, we just had to walk. <laughs> we walked behind the bar and there's a staircase that just goes up to the apartment. That is hilarious. So, just fill up the really stairs. It's, yeah. And I mean, 
go there if you can, but Newport, Oregon is not the easiest place in the world to get to, especially if you're on this side of the country, on the East Coast or East of the Mississippi River. It's like one way in, one way well, out. Well, you got to pretty much go to Portland and then drive down. Oh. And it's probably a couple hour drive. It's a gorgeous drive and you can hit a lot of other breweries while you're out there. But yeah, it's a great little small town, mostly fishing and lumber. I think the two main industries, very blue collar. It's not yeah. like Portland at all, which mm. is all hipster and modern. You might um, see a colossal claw, and you might see colossal claw if you're lucky. And I never did. Giant whale member. That. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I really had a great time. I learned a lot about Rogue, and it's it's really cool to see it in its environment. They're they're a great brewery. They've been doing a lot of cool things for a long time. I think just on this side of the country, we're not as exposed to them as much anymore. There's just too much. Too many options. I yeah. seem to think they were one of the first ones who really got into sustainability. Mm-hmm. Like they were oh, interesting. very much on the front end right. of that. And they do, know? they produce so much of what they use. They've got their own hop farms, they've got their own barley farms. Uh, you can actually go on their website and sign up for their crop report and they'll send you information about how the farms are doing. It's, it's really cool. That's cool. Um, they really take a lot of pride in doing what they do. So. Yeah. Maybe not the sexiest brewery out there anymore, but they do what they do and they do it well. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, pretty what more can you ask for, right? Yeah. And they haven't, you know, they haven't sold out or diluted mm-hmm. their, you know, because look at how many of those people that are, you yeah, know. The, a lot of class 88 is no longer independent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. One of the last ones standing. Cool. All right. Well, let's go into something a little bit trendier, um, <laughs> newer, let's say, than what we had before. And let's talk about the Combat Wombat. Sour Hazy IPA. 6.7% ABV, weird and wonderful fusion of a hazy IPA and a sour ale brewed with grapefruit and blood orange, then dry hopped with Australian hops. So they're using two-row and acidulated malts and wheat and oats and lactose and then grapefruit, blood orange, and they're using Victoria's Secret and Galaxy hops. So wombats are marsupials. <laughs> In case you're wondering. <laughs> okay, I, I have to admit, I was I was kind of not wanting to like this. I, I just just on title because I'm a judgy son of a gun. Sure. However, so however, IPA, however, what the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it's interesting. It's a it's a good beer, but I'm I'm with you. When I hear sour IPAs, I'm like, mm, yeah, I'm not sure. Red flag, stranger danger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like make a hoppy beer or make a sour beer. Pick, like pick one. But what you if know? we did both? Yeah. And what if it was okay? <laughs> <laughs> or a chain rack. This yeah. is not a chain rack. I, it's a lot I don't going like. On. Yeah, I don't like the way it smells. Like I don't like the aroma on this beer. But, yeah, but I like Juliana the way it tastes. says that about you, and you well, know. Yeah, huh. I don't like the smell, but I love the taste. You know. That's exactly what she says. <laughs> well, this isn't available all year. This is only available from June through September. So That's we happen right. to get this, you know, slightly earlier. But um mm, tastes like down under. <laughs> <laughs> I think we broke Sparky. It actually goes really well with this rich chocolate cake. Oh God, fine. The uh between the <laughs> the sour is is the sweetness from the cake really Kinda contrasts cuts the sour, yeah. and it's not so bad. It, nice. and, and a little bit of citrus oh, in there, yeah. the orange in it, it, it works really okay, well. Yeah, that's pretty legit. It, it, it's surprisingly good. All right, fine. Well, I actually, I do, I like I said, I really like the flavor of this beer. I, I think the citrus uh, notes work well with the sour mm-hmm. and everything. It's, and it's got a nice mouthfeel. It finishes Growing well. on me. Yeah, it, I, it, I like it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't think, like, if I was confronted with the lineup of all the other Rogue products, I would ever choose this over it, but I enjoy it. I mean, it, yeah, and I and I might have been a little bit wrong when I judged it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A little bit. I don't I don't know that we knew it was a sour IPA when we bought it. I think we, we just saw a Wombat, and we're like, oh, man, we're getting the Wombat. Yeah, I'm going to go Wombat yeah. every time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean. How can you say no to that? They're so cuddly. Right. Oh, wait, I mean, there's a sloth. Never mind. I'm right. taking that one. Hey, they do have a. Uh, they did the have can, a beer right? with a sloth on oh, it. Because <laughs> yeah. June saved the bottle. It's a bomber, of course, but it's got a sloth on it. That's amazing. It was. It was actually a hard kombucha. Oh. 
They, no. I mean, these guys make everything. Wow. They sure. really, they were the original experimenters. Out I feel there like. in Portland or uh, out there in Oregon, I mean, you kind of gotta. Yeah. You know, there's so yeah. much stuff growing out there, and <laughs> all the hippies. You know, what are you gonna do? Oh, those hippies. Yeah. yeah. Dirty. Hippies. I'm. I I'm really digging it. Um. This, I guess, as long as I don't smell it, because it does smell like the that. smell through you. Yeah, it, I think it, that's the Australian hops, maybe a little bit. Those, those are kind of. I mean, they taste cool, but yeah, but they're yeah. You don't want to funky get, smelling. Yeah, you just don't want to get too close to them. Yeah, and and sniff it smells them. Smells like an Aborigine. It could could very well be a certain part. But I like the balance. I, I like that little bit of sweetness, the little bit of sourness, and the citrusness. I mean, if you could have more sours with that citrus note to it, I, I think, yeah, that'd be pretty rad. Um, anyways, what are we going to rate this beer? We're yeah. going to rate it a three. It's a good three. It is a good three. Okay. Well, before we get to the last beer, or the next beer, I should say. Um, okay, let's talk about longevity for a bit. So, they've been around since 1988, and now everything that they're making is in cans. They've spread out to do seltzers and spirits and... Have you guys had any of their spirits? Yes, I have. I've, I've had the Dead Guy Whiskey. Oh, is it pretty good? Yeah, it is. I mean, it. Yes. <laughs> it's. I was going to say it, it tastes like a super alcoholic version of Dead Guy to a certain extent. But yeah, it's it's really quite good. Um, you know, I always struggle with those types of like, you know, spirit based, you know, based on a beer formula. Mm. Like, how should I drink these or mix these? That kind of thing. It just yeah. gets too complicated for me. But yeah, they've they've done a really good job with their spirits. That's cool. Yeah, and you can go, you don't have to go to Newport to have the spirits. You can, there's a bar in Portland that's mostly just, I think that this, I don't know if the distillery's there or they just have a, a spirits bar, but you can get cocktails and things. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. So the whiskey is their, is their big thing. Mainstay, yeah. yeah. So they have the generic dead guy, if you will. <laughs> and then, um, they have a stouted whiskey. They've got a rye whiskey. They've got a single malt whiskey. They have um, another single malt whiskey that lends to be more Japanese. Uh, they have their single barrel projects. And then they have a gin, a Pinot barrel farmhouse gin, and then their vodka. So, you know, they're not going like off the rails in terms <laughs> of really weird cordials and things but i think the vodka is what the is the base on most of those king cocktails they're doing now too. is that right so, yeah 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 well that's i mean that's fine you know i mean that's what most of the can cocktails are right it's now. true it's, yeah 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 they're using uh the gin well they they do have a ginger lemon whiskey mule hmm. um and an apple pie whiskey fizz <laughs> but interesting. They yeah, they've got an espresso martini and a lemonade iced tea vodka soda. So they're getting, um, they're getting a out. cucumber lime gin fizz. So yeah, they're doing a lot of interesting things. Huh. Cool. Nice. Okay, let's get into the jam session. Jam sesh. So this is a blonde fruited ale, 5.5% ABV. Most Friday evenings, you can hear the rogue band jamming in the warehouse. Um, they found that the music sounds a bit better after a few beers. Durr. So they created this sessionable ale with that in mind. Brewed with locally sourced upcycled bread and fresh strawberries, this beer is an ode to late nights, tasty licks, and face-melting solos. Want to jam? <laughs> uh, yeah. Hey, look, I'm just reading the notes. Yeah. Did you say bread? Bread. Upcycled bread. Huh. Ooh. So, so malt wise, it's got pills, uh, superior pills, oats, pale wheat, flake corn, and then a little bit of vanilla and lactose and upcycled bread. Yeah, no. I feel like upcycle. Yeah, no. Um, I feel That's like upcycled bread would be like my grandpa Sparks used to say. Well, you don't taste something like that every day. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tasted anything quite like that before. 
Well, I know like, uh, you know, if you make uh, traditional uh, kvass, a Russian That's rye true. Beer, yeah. it's usually made out of rye bread. That's mm-hmm. correct. Yeah. But a lot of times it, you don't drink it for the taste. So <laughs> I'm guessing upcycled bread is bread that was unused. Yeah. And they put, decided to put it in beer, but in a production beer, that seems odd because you can't what's have a the lot sourcing of, of the bread, bread yeah. and yeah. why doesn't the brewery just make less bread? Yeah. You know. Is well, there that much maybe all over? of the There's din- a lot of bunny bread that's maybe about to go. All the dinner rolls that people didn't eat the whole thing. They're like, all right, just throw it in the bucket over there. It's we'll only got one bite out of it. Just throw it in there. They've got one of those like charity bins in the parking yeah. lot. Yeah. You just yeah. bring your Give old us your bread. bread. Give us your bread. There. Your daily bread. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's something. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Do you taste the upcycled bread in here? I taste a little bit of that vanilla and lactose after yeah. you said it. I didn't really catch it at first because it's kind of subtle. I got the strawberry. Yeah, I'm it. really getting a strawberry. Yeah. But it's a nice strawberry. Like we were talking about earlier, some fruits don't work and mm-hmm. most are overdone. It's really subtle and it doesn't taste fake. Yeah. No, this is like having strawberry jam. This is a very yeah. delicate beer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it it kind of is, um, but it's really flavorful for being a lower like a, ABV, like a strawberry shortcake or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, maybe the recycling shortcake too. Uh, just Intel upcycling. Yeah. Upcycling. Upcycling. Yes. Yeah. upcycling the shortcake. Upcycling my shortcakes. Yeah. That'll be the name of this episode. <laughs> upcycling shortcakes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I just I think upcycled bread would be a great band name. Maybe that's the name of their band. Could maybe be. that's maybe it's the band that's brewing this. And like, Could be. That's the contribution. And this, yeah, and this is Upside how they brew with. Hey, we yeah. brought a lot of bread. Oh, cool! Throw it in. Well, okay. So for this being a little bit different and thinking outside the box, I, I think this is kind of cool, though. You know what I mean? I think it's a tasty beer. I would I would order a pint on tap and drink. It. I mean, I think it's yeah. I'd, I'd, we we'll definitely drink another one. This is surprisingly better than I thought it was going to be. Much better, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I just, I've had strawberry blonde ales before, and they're you know, exactly like whatever. Well, you can wreck this. You can wreck it so easily with bad strawberry. You know, yeah. I mean, that's well, and the fact that they used the the vanilla and the lactose and didn't jack it up. Right. I mean, that's that's what got my attention first. I read that. I'm like, I'm not going to like this. Yeah, this is- <laughs> everything about this is is used in the right proportion. It's subtle yeah. and it's balanced. But when you read it, you're like, oh, okay, they, you know, it's like red flag after red flag after red flag. You what know? have you done? You put bread in this. There's vanilla, lactose. Oh, and you're trying to use strawberries. Okay. Yeah. This is not going to be good. And then, boom, you have it. And you're like, oh, crap. Oh. Well, well, it really is strawberry that, yeah. shortcake because you got the the cream and the strawberries yeah, and the, the vanilla, yeah, and the, and and the bread stuff and the bread. You got the bread. Yeah, you got you got all the things. Kendall died. <laughs> Choking on chocolate Can, cake. <laughs> I mean, if you have to go out, yeah. I mean that's that's not a bad way to do it. Death no. by chocolate cake. Yeah. yeah, death by chocolate cake. And strawberry beer. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can almost drink this out of like a champagne flute at a fancy party. Well, you have I mean, to raise your pinky. Sure. Yeah. That's the only... Well, yeah. I broke my pinky a few years ago. Oh, ouch, so man. <laughs> that explains a lot, though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's, uh, yeah, it's really nice. I like All it. Right. What are we going to rate the jam session? I mean, I like it this much. Okay. We're going to give it a three. We like it. We don't love it. Okay. Well, that's, that's fair because it's... But we want some more of it. It's, I mean, Blondales aren't exactly something that we all run for at the bar. You know, when we're... You take that Blondale, you put some lemonade in it. Guess what I, you I, got? You know what? It's so funny, though, because I know people, they're just such fans of that style. Like, this is going to be the summer Blondale. And it never is. <laughs> you, can't, you can't make fetch happen. No. No, you just, you can't. Mm. But I think for, for what it is, you know, they did a great job. And yeah. it's outside the box, but subtly outside the box and it was good and i think rogue is still relevant today um absolutely as much as they were in the beginning and why the heck aren't we drinking more rogue go get some dead guy absolutely i know right now all right well that's gonna do it for today's episode i think this one went rather well 
Um, good old boy, Kendall. Thanks for being here. It was truly my pleasure. Thank you for the birthday cake. Hey, no worries, no worries. Please tell us about your blog. My beautiful wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at beermakes3.com. Hi, June. Hope you're having a great time. <laughs> good old boy, Sparky. Thank you for the pepperoni. You are so welcome. So good. Good. I'm so glad. And take me in the time machine back to the beginning of craft beer origins with Rogue. That's fun. I know, right? Um, good old boy, Dave. That's it. Party is over. Everybody go home. Well, that pretty much says it all now, doesn't it? This is good old gal Juliana. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. Rogue, keep doing what you're doing. We love you so much. Send us some dead guy. <laughs> yes, send us some dead guy. Uh, keep on chuggling, everyone, and catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap. Just tap it in. The subscribe button. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, Uncle Larry, or whoever it is that talks to you on your phone. Play podcast, Sip Suds and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram with our handle at Sip Suds and Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands, millions, and millions of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor. Take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Come back, join us for another episode, and keep on sipping. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.